What's up, y'all? Another Bible study, Bible reading, 1 Corinthians 15. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, the gospel, that if we confess our sins and believe that God sent Jesus to this world to die for our sins, and he was raised up after three days and taken back to heaven, And we'll be resurrected the same way if we believe that. If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, unless you didn't really believe. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, According to the scriptures, the prophecies, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, so Peter must have been one of the ones that he appeared to on the road before he appeared to the eleven together when they were gathered together to eat. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time. Now I've looked into this, and people can try to deny it, but but people say that it's more likely, people that don't believe say that it's more likely that someone raised from the dead and they saw him than for 500 people to all be delusional and all see one, one vision, the same vision. He, ap he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep, died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also, to Paul. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, the original believers. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Jesus is the grace of God. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now if, Christ, now if Christ is preached, that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Speaking of our resurrection, all the people who have died, having a true faith in Jesus, are going to be resurrected to life. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, and your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. 
For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. But that's not the case. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished eternally. But that's not the case. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. I wouldn't feel like that though. <laughs> to be honest, I f I would hope I would hope in Jesus even if there wasn't a resurrection. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who were asleep, who are dead. For since by a man came death, by Adam came death from sin, because sin leads to death, and Jesus is the only one that can save us from that death, from eternal death. By a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. After that, those who are Christ at his coming. Now that word used here, the Greek word used for coming, and his coming, that's parousia. Now there's two different words that are used when describing Jesus' Jesus' coming, his second coming. There's parousia, and there's erkomai, I think that's how you say it, erhomai. The parousia is defined as coming, or presence, or appearance. That's when he's going to come on the clouds, and every eye will see him. And that's at the beginning, I believe at the beginning of the tribulation. Could be the middle. I'm still working that out. That's at the beginning, and the Erhoma, that's describing his coming, his second coming at the end of the tribulation, when he comes back with the saints for war, to, de to destroy the Antichrist and all the people trying to fight against him. Imagine that. People are going to be trying to fight against God, against Jesus. <laughs> He's going to come down in the clouds, or he's going to come down on a horse. When he, when he comes originally, he's coming in the, in the clouds. The second time, on a, on a white horse. What are they going to be shooting up in the air? <laughs> oh, man. And Jesus is coming soon. I'm excited. Whether it's whether the two witnesses show up first and we have to go through some time, or whether it's at the beginning of the seven years, which I believe it could be, and I believe what brings a judgment based on scripture is if they divide the land up that's breaking the everlasting covenant and it brings a curse. If Israel, Judah, decides to divide up the land of Israel, or, or Jerusalem even. So I believe this, this uh, peace deal that Trump's talking about may be the Daniel 9.27 covenant, which brings all, all of this about. 
but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits. After that, those who are who are Christ at his coming, the parousia. Then comes the end. And this jumps all the way to the end of the millennial reign, I believe. Then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to God, to the God and, and Father. When he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will, will be abolished is death. See, after the thousand year reign, there's going to be no death anymore. At all. Everyone's, you're either with God or you're dead. Eternally. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. That's a prophecy. But when he says, all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted who put all things in subjected to him, in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are they baptized for them? Speaking of being baptized for Jesus. Why are we also in danger every hour? Even in this time. Being a disciple of Jesus, preaching the gospel, we could be in danger. But especially in that time, they're constantly in danger. And even more than that, the time that's coming. I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you, by the boasting in you which I have which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If from human motives, he dies to the flesh daily and suffers daily. If from human motives, I fought with the wild beasts at Ephesus, the, the people who were trying to kill him there, what does it profit me if it's about human motives, if he was just doing it for himself? If the dead are not raised, here's another quote from the Old Testament, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Become sober-minded as you ought, and stop sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, How are the dead raised? And with what kind of body do they come? You fool. That which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And that which you sow, you do not sow the body which is to be, but a bare grain, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body just as he wished. And to each, and to each of the seeds, a body of its own. Speaking of our, our human bodies. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one flesh of men, and another flesh of beasts, and another flesh of birds, and another of fish. There are also heavenly bodies, and earthly bodies. See, our heavenly body is what we're going to receive. 
at the resurrection. But the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. And according to the book of Enoch, stars are actually, well angels are referred to as stars in the Bible, but in the book of Enoch, the stars are actually beings. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown a perishable body, perishable body, our human body, that's what's sown. And it is raised an imperishable body, imperishable body. See, our new bodies, we won't be able to die anymore. It is sown in dishonor, our human bodies. It is raised in glory, our heavenly bodies. It is sown in weakness, our human bodies. It is raised in power, our heavenly bodies. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So also it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The last Adam referring to Jesus, because Adam was a direct son of God, and Jesus is as well, except Jesus is God, Adam was human. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth, Adam, earthy. The second man is from heaven, Jesus. As is the earthy, so also, so also, also are those who are earthy. And as is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. Just as he. Just as we have borne the image of the earthy, as we do now, we will also bear the image of the heavenly. As we were created in the image of God, but in earthy bodies, earthly bodies. An image that doesn't necessarily mean and look, but in likeness, as we were created in the likeness of God, to like spiritually, and when we receive our heavenly bodies, it's going to be like God's as well. And we're, we're going to be perfect. We're not going to be able to sin. We're not going to be able to die. Just as we have borne the image of, of the earthy, we will also bear the image of the heavenly. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood, our human bodies, cannot inherit the kingdom of God which is the thousand year reign and eternity as well. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Speaking of our human bodies, we can't enter the kingdom of God in our human bodies. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep or die. 
but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable in the heavenly bodies as the resurrection. And we, those of us alive at that time, will be changed. Our bodies will be changed. Now there's some verses, see I'm still studying this out about the Revelation timeline. But there's some verses that indicate that we may be on earth and people are going to come to us and see us and turn to God. So we may be on earth in the heavenly bodies. For the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. It doesn't say here we will be caught up. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, our heavenly bodies. And this mortal must put on immortality, unable to die anymore. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. Because sin leads to death. And the power of sin is the law. Because if there was no law, there would be no sin. Sin comes through the law. Because, because it's the breaking of the law, which is sin. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior of the world, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Can't wait. The time's short. <laughs> get, your heart, get your heart right with God. Be ready for Jesus. Have your lamps full. Have oil in your lamps. Live right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Like I'm saying, get your heart right, have your actions right, doing, doing God's work. The time is short. There's so many people on this earth that aren't saved. So many people on this earth that are, that aren't ready. We have to be ready, y'all. Knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. It's not in vain. That's the end of 1 Corinthians 15. May God bless you guys.